Hello there, you spectacular specimens of humankind, you happy go lucky scamps of individuals. Welcome back to Thurston Vanity. Now, the other week, I did a reaction video to the new trailer for The Crow, which is the uh, 2024 Crow remake with Bill Skarsgård. Many of you will know this channel from that, because it... Uh, Definitely got far more traction than I was expecting it to, to say the least. It definitely, uh, well, it a, a lot of people were very opinionated about it, you know? Now, it seems that the vast majority of people that uh, saw the video were in agreement with what I was saying, and those that weren't, for the most part, were at least very civil about it, which I very much appreciate. And those people that did disagree raised some really interesting points, and were constructive with their criticism. We had some really interesting like conversations off the back of the disagreements and the alternative points of view, you know? There were, of course, some pretty nasty comments, but it's the internet in 2024. This is gonna happen. It's just the nature of things, you know? Now, before we get into the entire structure of this video and what it's all about in regards to remakes of movies, let's just have a quick recap on reaction videos or react content, as it were. My react video was exactly that, a reaction. There was no going away and scripting anything. Everything that was said was a direct reaction from what I was seeing. And that's the way that I choose to do reaction videos. It's just in there, raw and of the moment. I am aware that there will be some creators out there that do go away, watch it, script it, work out what they're going to react to, and then come back and act it all out as if it's a first time thing in order to get the good timing and the good punchlines and stuff. But in the nicest way possible, I don't have the time or patience for that. <laughs> what you see is exactly what you get. I watch the thing, I react in accordance with it, you know? In regards to the Crow reaction video I did, a lot of people had common feelings about things. The general consensus was it shouldn't have been the characters Eric and Shelley. The Crow is able to bring back anybody. Like, the whole uh, dynamic and brand of The Crow is they can bring back anybody that they feel deserves a chance to get their vengeance or wreak havoc on the people that cause them anguish. That kind of thing. So it could have been anybody. They could have done an entirely new Crow story, and they didn't. They chose to use the well-loved characters of Eric and Shelley. So that's less than ideal and a lot of people agreed with that a lot of people thought this is an interesting movie i'm interested to see what it was but they shouldn't have made it the well-loved characters that were featured in the 1994 crow movie the other thing that was frequently mentioned was the fact that the aesthetic choices the design choices aesthetically were too different from the original movie in 1994 and also too different from the graphic novels for those people that don't know the crow started off as a graphic novel in 1989 was the first issue that was made and as a result the aesthetics of it were all very 80s influenced 80s 90s influenced in regards to like the gothic makeup the big hair the leather jackets that kind of thing now the main complaints that were made about that video not specifically about the trailer itself but in regards to my reaction to that trailer the first one was that i was biased and to be quite honest with you I agree. I was biased. I tried to go in with an open mind. I genuinely did try to go in with an open mind. But every step, everything that was pushed towards me, I immediately compared to the movie that I know and love. And it upset me. It, it frustrated me. And I didn't understand the angle they were going for. So, yeah, I really struggled with trying to keep my bias out of it. And if we're being honest about this, completely failed to keep my bias out of it. Yeah, it's a flaw of mine. I can admit to that. The next comment that was made quite frequently was that I was never going to ever appreciate the remake because 
of how much I loved the original. Like, the, I was never going to appreciate any kind of remake because the original was so dear to me. And to be quite honest with you, that is just straight up untrue. There are loads of remakes out there that I absolutely love. The classic one that immediately springs to mind is Dune. I loved the 1986 movie of Dune when I was a kid. I grew up with that movie. I watched it and absolutely loved it. I loved the aesthetics. I loved the soundtrack. I loved the way that it went about things. Obviously, later on, I found out about the fact that they added things that weren't in the book, but that's not the point. I loved the movie. I thought it was really, really good. Then I watched the remakes, the, the three-part series they did, and that was decidedly average. But the new Dune movies are sensational. Dune is a perfect example, in my mind, of ways that remakes can really take the source material and expand on it and grow from it and make it something new and interesting. There are others, of course. The Planet of the Apes series. The original movie was so old and yet had a lot of love to it, and yet they have made an entire franchise off the Planet of the Ape movies. And then, of course, the 1999 bisexual awakening movie, The Mummy. Many people are not aware, but The Mummy, as in with Brendan Fraser, good old sexy people all over the place in very hot countries getting a little bit sweaty, like, that was a remake of the 1932 Boris Karloff movie of The Mummy. And I love the original black and white movie, but the new movie really took the core elements of the black and white movie and created something new and really interesting. Peter Jackson making King Kong. That movie basically rebirthed the entire kaiju movement within Hollywood, bringing on the Godzillas and all of the, the new Kong versus Godzilla. All of that stuff was brought around because of Peter Jackson's King Kong. And then going back to Bill Skarsgård, who is playing Eric Draven in the new Crow movie, he played It. The original It with Tim Curry was sensational. I remember watching it far too young and shitting my pants. Yet the new It movies have so much love around them. It's a very different style of clown horror and yet hasn't taken away from the original Tim Curry movie. I also have a theory that the reason why they might have changed the crow's makeup in the new version is because of the fact that the It makeup was quite similar to the crow's makeup with the lines across the eyes and the lines from the mouth. I, it, I had thoughts, you know? And then there was a significant amount of people that were not happy with my spontaneous comment saying that I liked that there were more people of colour in the movie. Now, I have to say that the comment was made because I love seeing multiculturalism within movies, within the Hollywood scene. I have a lot of friends in the movie industry, and I'm well aware of the historical and present issues that people of colour face within the industry. It is getting better, but when I see it, I appreciate it. But it needs to be said that the 1994 Brandon Lee version of The Crow had so much multiculturalism in it, and I did not mean to undervalue that by any stretch of the imagination. You had Brandon Lee, who was half Chinese, Bruce Lee's son, for those people that might not be aware. Um, Ernie Hudson played the uh, the police officer. Bai Ling played the arch-villain's sister. Uh, Lawrence Mason played Tintin. Tony Todd played Grange, who was the uh, villain's bodyguard. When you actually look at the entire casting of The Crow from 1994... It was extremely multicultural, especially for Hollywood in the 90s. It was really, really multicultural. And I genuinely didn't mean to undermine that when I made that comment. It was just, as we talked about, a reaction to the fact that I saw so much multiculturalism in the new movie. And I appreciate multiculturalism within movies. I think it's a great thing to see that things are becoming more and more equal I wouldn't say that they're perfect, but I would say they're on their way, which makes me happy to see, you know? Now, finally, the last comment that was made that confused me more than anything else was that the remake of The Crow was too woke. 
Do any of you know what woke means? Woke, as we understand it today, originates as an African-American word, meaning a person that was, and I quote, alert to racial prejudice and discrimination. In the early 2010s, the word expanded and began to encompass all kinds of social inequalities, whether it be racism, sexism, prejudice against the LGBTQIA, anything that affects minority groups is wokeness. And to be quite honest with you, I'm aware that many of you may be new to the channel and what have you, but in that regard, I'm woke as fuck. <laughs> I am very woke. I am aware of my privilege as a cisgendered white man and will do what I can to stand beside the minorities of the world to help spread their words. Not stand in front of them and say what I think they need, but by listening to them and repeating their words so that more people can hear what they are saying. People tend to use woke as a catch-all for, oh, well, I disagree with that, so it must be woke. Anything that they disagree with is woke. But as we have just discussed, the original Crow movie, the 1994 Brandon Lee Crow movie that everyone loves, was woke as fuck. It was very, very multicultural, and therefore, very woke. Okay. Let's expand it out. What makes a good remake? Let's discuss it. Firstly, let's question why do companies make remakes? Why do movie companies decide to make remakes? First and foremost, money. Secondly, established audience, whether people watch out of spite, watch to see how it's changed, genuinely are just curious, or they love the franchise, there is a captive audience there, there is already an established audience, and therefore you don't have to work as hard to get a new audience. Modernization of a franchise, appealing to new audiences, people already know the hype, and therefore they're like, oh, well, what's going to happen? What's this all about? And then finally, retaining the IP, which we'll get on to. In fact, let's go through them one by one in order to make sure that we are completely covering everything, right? So let's kick things off with the main ones, shall we? Money and IP. These are the main reasons why any company will do anything. If you don't think that big film companies do things for money, then you're a fool. Indie film companies tend to be different because they tend to have more passion for the creative art of filmmaking, of telling a story. But the big companies are businesses and businesses are driven by money. They want the profit. Now, in regards to finances, the internet has hugely damaged the movie industry. From illegal downloads, through torrenting, to streaming platforms, people are far less likely to go see a movie in the cinema because they can't justify the price. Especially in this day and age where everyone's in a cost of living crisis. But also, many people have huge TVs and surround sound systems in their homes, so they can get a near enough experience without having to pay what can be ludicrous prices to go and see things in the cinema. As a result, people aren't buying movie tickets as much. And you can see this a lot by the fact that they have to make deals with so many other companies where it's like, if you use this company, you get two for one Wednesdays or buy one, get one free movie tickets or sign up to this thing and you get six movie tickets a month or something like that, you know? As a result, Paying for new movies is a risky business for the industry because if it's a box office flop, it's more costly than it used to be. So how do you guarantee a box office success? Remake things that already have a devoted and loving following because even if it's a flop, you're still going to get people going to see what they have changed, going to see how it unfolds and how the remake compares to the original which is all money in the bank for the movie industry. And then if they're not doing it for money, they're doing it to retain the IP, to retain the copyright very specifically. You will notice big movie companies who I'm not going to specifically mention who have been remaking a lot of their old movies because they want to retain the IP. They want to make sure that they can maintain the copyright for another 50 odd years. 
I'm not going to go into the absolute clusterfuck of how some of these uh, remakes are cheating the original artists out of their cut of the profits, because that's an entire thing in and of itself. But needless to say, remaking a movie in order to maintain the copyright is worth a box office loss because it means that nobody else can jump in on the IP. Nobody else can jump in on your creative work or your associated work. Look at what happened recently with Winnie the Pooh or Steamboat Willie. There have been all kinds of chaos happening from those specifically well-loved characters going into the public domain. Now, in regards to non-monetary drives to remake things, I can fully respect the wanting to appeal to new audiences. Times change. Technology changes. And it can be absolutely amazing when they reinvent something that is so loved. They reinvent a movie that is held so dear by so many people. And helping new people to love the franchise just as much as the original fans do. I was accused of being a gatekeeper. I am not a gatekeeper. I love it when people love things that I love. The more, the merrier. I am a very open hedonist. The more that people love the stuff that I love, the better everything is. The more that we have something to connect over and socialize with and converse about and talk about. I love that stuff. However, when the remake doesn't do the well-loved franchise justice, it not only feels like a slight on the franchise that we all know and love, but it also creates completely different expectations to new audience members about what that franchise is about. Expectations that the rest of the franchise just simply won't connect with, which is something that I find so frustrating because when people do watch a remake, get excited about it, and then go back and see the original, they just don't have that connect. Their expectations for the original are completely different because the remake doesn't do the franchise justice. Now, there will always be a level of apprehension that diehard fans have when they announce a remake of a well-loved movie. That whole attitude of, if it's not broke, don't fix it. However, with the attitude of wanting to keep the franchise alive, most fans want a remake to succeed. They, well, we want it to be successful. We want it to stand alongside in order to bring life back to the franchise, bringing new people to a well-loved story. Saying to new people, hey, you like the remake? Look, seriously, check out the original. But as just discussed, there needs to be a similar level of expectation. Otherwise, people who watch the remake are going to go, what the fuck is this shit? When they watch the original, which is amusingly exactly what people who love the original see when they see a remake and they go, the fuck is this shit? Because it just doesn't hit the mark. Which neatly brings me on to... What makes a good remake? <laughs> Let's talk about it. What does a remake need, in my opinion, to have in order to be successful? I think I'm not alone in saying that a remake needs to capture the vital essence. We just want to drain your living essence. The spirit, for lack of a better term, of the original material. But what's the spirit, Valen? The atmosphere. We're talking select aesthetic stylization choices. We're talking the musical themes, not only the soundtrack, but also like the atmospheric music. That ambience that you feel when you're sat down and you're watching a certain scene and you know what's about to happen because you know the story, but the ambience, the atmosphere, that feeling is the same even if the actual scene goes slightly differently. The reason why I think Dune has done so well, in my opinion, is because they have played with the scale of the universe. They've taken the original source content, cut some stuff to streamline it for the big screen, kept certain aesthetic themes that appeal to we diehard fans, and then expanded 
in order to give the entire story more depth. The atmosphere is still a vast sci-fi epic on a desert planet, and there are enough nods to the original source material that appeal deeply to the die-hard fans. I feel a good remake needs to capture the feeling of the source material. It needs to capture the core themes and then open them up to explore them in more depth. Keep the core scenes without too much alteration so that the fans don't feel like they have been cheated out of core elements of the story. And then throw out certain nods to the original source material that all of the wonderful, loving fans from the old school feel all warm and fuzzy inside. So yeah, that's how I feel about what needs to be included in a remake movie. I feel that that is the kind of thing that will appeal to new fans, stay true to the feeling of the original source material, and also not leave old school fans of the original content feeling cheated, feeling let down, feeling insulted, that kind of thing, you know? However, I am well aware that I am one person with my own opinions, and there will be many people out there that disagree with me. So if you do disagree with me, please leave a comment. Let's have some more conversations. Or alternately, if you think I have missed something, also put it down below. We had some really interesting discussions in the comment section of the reaction video. So yeah, let's see if we can do more of that. And also a massive thank you to those people who did disagree, but were constructive in their criticism, as opposed to just being straight up nasty. The vast majority of people, even in their disagreement, had a respectfulness about the way they went about it. And I really appreciate that. If you've enjoyed the video, please do not forget to uh, click that cheeky little thumbs up and press the subscribe button. It heartily helps me in the algorithms and if you enjoyed this then please go forth and check out some of the other videos and indulge in the home of hedonism which is this channel if you would like to find me elsewhere you can find me on twitch valen vane you can find me on tiktok at valen vane and you can find me on instagram at valen vane thank you very much i genuinely do appreciate people having good respectful conversations and i felt like i had to make a video around remakes so that we are all on the same page for any movies that are coming up there are a lot of remakes or sequels to movies that i grew up with so i feel like there's going to be a fair amount of those kind of reaction videos or what have you coming up we'll see how it goes we'll see what happens you know now i have to give you all a heads up I will not be doing a video next Friday because next Friday is the Easter holidays here in the United Kingdom or certain parts of the UK. And I'm going to go spend some time with my partner and her child because I don't get to see them often enough. And, you know, it's nice to go and do that. So I will see you all in two weeks time with more delightfully hedonistic videos. And until then, friends, don't do anything I wouldn't do because if I wouldn't do it, it'll fucking kill you. I'll see you all later.